So I'm talking to my lawyer friend here, Nick, and uh, text messaging. And Nick is quite the uh, ling linguistic guy. He showed me him studying some uh, foreign language, another foreign language. He's got so many out of his belt. And I said, well, I'm looking at some uh, studies on pre-stressed, uh, um, university studies on pre-stressed structures and reading documents on it also, on how it would behave, you know, because... I want to know, you know, pre-stressed, to have someone come up with the idea of using that and and to be a, uh, you know, to allow for earthquakes. Okay, well, they did, except for they, they displaced it like 11 inches if you go here. That's nothing special because they displaced it over, I think it was hours to move it over there. So they slowly did it. Unlike an earthquake, it's going to be very aggressive. They also left out the frequency uh, um, that would take place, that each one of these would have a different frequency reaction. They just brute force it with hydraulics at certain points. Now, let's move into, and then he sent me, the, and this is the order he sent it to. He sent me this one, rather. And then I looked at this one, this one, and finally this one. After I even wrote him back saying, no, it's, uh, it's something else, and then... That the, uh, it's not just wind, okay? And I'll show you in, this, in, this, in these videos where it's a history of the structure having a sway. But I'm going to, I don't know if I should reveal it to you just now or not. Maybe we'll wait. Um, a couple of these, they, have, they make mistakes in the narration. For example, the dog that died in the car, they said, untrue. The dog uh, climbed out of the car and ran um, down the bridge to die. I think that's in maybe this video or this one. Um, the professor that went out there looks like just some nutty professor that's gone out there. And in reality, he um, said he, I think he left the door, he opened the car door, perhaps. I don't know that for sure. The professor, I'm sorry, the photographer drove his car. It's the photographer's car, as I understand it. And he, it's over the story. And he left his dog out there to die. So let's begin this with uh, with uh, what Nick first sent me, this one, and let's uh, narrate over it. And I'm going to show you. As you can see, this bridge was. I'm going to explain over top of it also. Length of center span, very critical, 28 feet, width 39 feet, divided down the middle. Okay, so this is exactly, let's call it 40 feet if you want. So we got exactly 20 feet here and 20 feet here. You can, you know, clean this up if you want. Let's just go at 20 feet. This is a cable stay bridge. Interesting enough, I'm going to tell you, since I've already wrote Nick, I'll tell you some of the things I said, that I've always found it fascinating that towers didn't fail, so that's great. And number one, that this top span cable did not fail. All right, now let's watch. Um, depth of girders are eight feet, as I'll just reveal to you the, in the video and also of what I've known in studies, is that originally the designer was 24 or 25 feet, I forget. And he was forced to do an outside um, engineer to look at his work, saving money. They say, hey, do that eight feet. Now, I want you to think of this while I do this. This is the outside girder, right? So I help you guys out a little bit. That's the girder. It's just steel that the floor floor joists okay floor joists think of them like that the tie across all right i have it like that even across quite quite not so but it's about four feet and i'll show you when one of the workers are down but it's tied like you know let's we'll use that and they're saying that 40 miles an hour wind and also 35 miles an hour wind two different statements on that remember this thing flex though before that it had a flex issue Got its name, Gallup and Gertie, not just of that day, but previous. So this is a 200 um, 2800 center, 2800 foot center span. Imagine without the, without anything on it, all, 2800 feet from each tower, depending on how they connected it there. I don't care if this is eight feet tall. This is wants to flex. It's just going to be a long flexible pencil, pencil, right? And what holds it from flexing? Uh, going to flexing is, are the cables and this is where I'm going to explain it to you and then you'll watch it and understand it better maybe I feel like I should show you the video first and then do my reveal but they're stating 35 mile maybe you already figured it out 35 mile 40 mile hour winds 
created a vortex, like a plane, top and bottom of this. So as it goes across, it's a negative load, positive load, and it creates the thing going up and down, up and down, up and down, rotating. But remember, that it said it had the wind was such the thing that had found its frequency there that caused this failure, 30, 40, or 35 miles per hour. But remember, this had an issue before that. Cars driving over it did this. They're not creating wind, all right? It's this reduction here in that great span that's the issue. It's not, and this lacking um, bracing, more bracing across there would have made it more like a boxed beam. You can see it once I tie the bottom over. So now it's going to have to sway this as one as one piece. All right, so it would have to sway it as one section. Mm. Wind would hit here flat, right? Say the wind's coming that direction. Um, can it get under and then hit this side also? Or would it blow how much of a force, a negative pressure, would be created here if doing it that way? The deck being the underside here, being flat, the concrete up top. Creates a negative pressure, and as the wind hits this, this sail and comes around the outside, negative pressure creates an uplift over here. Let's think about that. Let's watch the video. Exceptionally long and narrow, over half a mile long, only 39 feet wide. Okay. It lasted just four months. Four months. All right. So we can use the full content here because it's uh, government and not, uh, lost, lost copyright. So fair use under that. Narration also. Well, I'm going to leave this narration out. During construction, we see the steel girders. Okay, so I want you to notice the man. And the floor beams, the girders, this is this is only eight feet. Right? It may appear longer, but it's only eight feet, right? So this is the steel girders with is a stiffener there. See that plate. So this won't rack. Keep from going. We look top view down, right? So top view this is the outside girder. And this one here will be this one. And then they put a brace in there like that to keep it nice and square. Okay, on the opposite side of the structure, I'll make this one green. There's the other girder. So they're going to be locked, all right? They're locked. Oh, okay, I want you to take note now of the hangers. The hangers, these cable hangers, right? Cable stay bridge. And they're connected at however they're connected onto this. Not the bridge, not here. Not on these floor beams, right? They're connected here. Not on the roadway floor beams. The roadway floor beams transfer the load out to these. That then are the it would just fall to the ground if these hangers weren't holding them. These hangers are connected here, 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 two sides of the structure, forty feet apart. You can call it thirty-nine. Forty feet apart. Now well, let's go. And they're they're steel cable. Eight feet tall, which were supposed to stiffen the bridge against bending. However, so okay. So to stiffen the bridge against bending, the 8 foot, remember they were supposed to be 24. And these are very significant themselves, aren't they? And they're at the well, bottom of the structure. So at the top of the structure, we got the road deck. Oh, so it turns out we do got sort of a box here already existing. All right, we have a box existing, 8 foot, road deck acting as a rigid, rigid part of the top, and the floor beam at the bottom, mostly, you know, Going on, heck, that might be close to six feet. I don't know their size. Um, it might be a balance of two feet looking at the sizing the man up. So that that's pretty damn rigid, the bottom part of his deck. Pretty damn rigid. Now, I don't. I think I want to give it away now here. All right, I'm going to give you a hint. Do, 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 do. What's this I'm making? A pendulum. Um, up and down vibration was observed during the entire use. Up and down vibration during the entire use. The entire use. So let, let's think about that. Up and down vibration during the entire, entire use. use. And that's looking down the roadway, the road deck. I guess I'm going to have to give it away a bit. But here's the steel. And remember, you got your cables. And... These cables, the technology wasn't there. 
I'm going to give it away. You're going to catch on. Is that if you don't have these each taking on the, the equal load of this bridge decking, then you will create an oscillating effect. Say this one takes on 100 kips, let's call it, right? And this one takes on, and their spacing is equal. And this one's 90, and then this one's 75, and then this one's 100. Well, you got this weird-ass profile of, of what's uh, that you're creating of, of the uh, what these cables are, are tensioned at, being that all the cables are the same. That they didn't reduce the size of the cable, so and these cables, are just, all the hangers are the same. So this thing always waved, right? It always it always did that as it went down. Um, this cable, it just took a hell of a lot of force when this thing was trying to fail, and it did not waver. The cable there is consistent all the way across. I think these hangers are were not were they 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 didn't get the correct tension on them. I think you have some loose hangers. Now, let's, let's, let me prove this a little bit. Full life of the bridge. All right, let's look at this man jump down. He jumped down. That's damn near his waist. I don't know how tall he is, but now it looks like it's four feet. This guy to the left over there looks like he's standing on something then. But so now, I said six early, so now I'm back to four again. All right, so it looks like about four feet, and that's about four feet up to his, uh, well, that would make him pretty tall, wouldn't it? Maybe it's three feet. Maybe that's five. I don't know. All right, there's the bottom flange, all right? There's the bottom flange down there. There's your top flange, and you're connecting. All right, they did use some stiffeners between each one of these floor beams. So here's the floor beam. I'm going top view. I'm going to put, let me let me do the, the little, take a little liberty here. I'm going to switch it around. Let's do red again. Let's do it in a direction and do it. So that's the, uh, that's the girder, the outside girder with the wire cable on it, all right? Cables. And here are, are your floor beams going across, all right? But they did add some stiffeners in here, all right? They added them there. Oh, there it is right in the background. I'm going to move it out of the way. And then they, there it is right there, all right? Well, um, bolt connection. It looks like you see daylight, so it looks bolt a connection. Rivet, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. So it's got that that, 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 that that square, that rigidity going on there also in this deck. So remember, and, and it also, you know, wind, etc. Remember I said air comes out of there and breaks it up. Well, in this case, you get that negative pressure thing going on. Also, this cable thing, this thing, even without the great winds, it went up and down as cars went across it. It, it, it did, it's, it did an, isol an oscillation, just as cars are trying to drive across it. And that's because it's transferring the load to the across these floor beams into the girder, and the cars are cycling energy into these cables. I think these cables were a little bit slack, and as it goes there, the load of the cars, you know, you say it's not much, but the span is already, you know, whatever the span is, it's already you know sensitive. Now, just so you know, they did add some stiffeners to here and things like that. They added some, but uh, some uh, technology. Here's opening day. Opening day. Listen. So now we see they used dual, dual cables, right? Span, you know, the spacing. They're sort of like twin cables opposing each other, right? Opposing each other. Okay, cool. You got to wait for it. There's the tower. Two towers. Let's make it clear. There's tower one. There's tower two right here. Is the wind blowing across wind from right to left? Look at the flags. This all will matter. Okay, this is November 7th, 10 a.m. It says vibration of bridge in torsional mode. Yeah, great. On November 7th, the bridge suddenly went into a twisting motion. The wind speed was a steady 42 miles per hour. All right, he says steady 42. Let me cut to the chase here. I want you to use this. These flagpole, these poles, to tell you exactly what's going on with this structure. How the bottom, now that's, the, that's um, these are plumb. These things are installed plumb with the bridge, meaning straight up and down. Now look at them, they're parallel. This distance to this distance is parallel. The bottom, this tells you the bottom of the structure is rotating equally. So here's that outside girder. 
Okay. Here's the inside floor joist. I'll put it down the bottom there. And there's the outside girder here. And then here are the, here's the lights right here. So they're rotating equally. I want you to think about this. As it rotates, these cables over here become shorter. All right? They, they shorten. All right? They don't take on the load. This is no longer, let me do that, plumb. This load here transfers to these cables. All right? These cables over here. They transfer to those cables that are holding the structure up. All right, so these become more taut on this side of the structure. And this um, pendulum idea, this whole load here I'm talking about, is now torqued at the bottom of there. It's loading the bottom of it. This becomes a swing. It can only go up so high. Add a, add a plumb here, right? It can only go up so high, and as you'll indicate it by the lights, the parallel lights in the background. You'll see again when I, when I show it. It would be this one and this one. And you'll be able to profile the swinging pendulum. For example, this light down here doesn't swing as much as the two or three lights in the middle. So you can profile without getting confused by looking at this deck, what's going on. You can look at the lights and you can understand the parallelness of it. And you can understand that this is now at its max stress before it does reversal. It can only do so much cable. Now these cables are are um, hangers, okay? They hold the bridge up. But those cables, as this rotated up into the air from the side, they became post-tension more. They took on a greater load as they try to support the entire bridge on one side now. As, as this becomes loose over here, these cables shorten on this side, taking the load off, if you will. And now that load is down here at the bottom here. Swinging pendulum, this can only hold so much. It's tight. It's tight, and it can it just can't go keep going up further uh, up in the air over here, right? Let's clean that up a bit. So it swings up into the air. Look at the lights parallel. All right, we're going to get better images of that also. So this can only take, and here's the bridge deck underneath, but it's like this now. These become more taut. They become a bungee cord, all right? They're real tight. And this can only go up so much. It only goes up to that height, this height here. And then it can't, you know, the, the, the tension on the other side can all, stops, restricts this motion here. So it, it, it swings out of axis also, out of plumb. Swings to your left a little bit. So it's like a swing also, a pendulum and a swing. That's why I mentioned a pendulum. So now it it it, it starts, it grabs as much as it could. It can't go any of the, gra the gravity of it, you guys. The weight of it, it finds equilibrium. It can't go any higher. It then drops. As it drops, it just does a reversal again. Now this side all of a sudden becomes this side is taut. These cables are loose. They got all that energy in them. They just got loosened up real quickly. It's a five-second cycle, incidentally, and we're going to calculate that cycle. In other words, you're going to see, if you start from here, here, the cycle around is five seconds from here. So it's at a height, and here you go, one, two, three, four, five, and you go one, two, three, four, five, and it'll be back there again. That's their five-second cycle. All right, look at the lights again, and notice the parallelness of them. And down here, of course, is less rotation. This was enough to keep the bridge oscillating in one of its natural it's modes of vibration with a period of five seconds. See how parallel the lights are? Okay, so that whole outer outer girder, you can now visualize it, including, so you can visualize this outer girder red, I should say with red, right? And this one's like this. Let's do it again. Okay, so now this girder, and you can see how it's twisting also. So this girder is here, parallel, I can use the light, and it's here. Okay, so now there's your girder now. Over here, I can use this light, if I had the other light across here, I would go like that. And it's, it's a little bit, it's a little different. It's not the same rotation. It's a little bit of a different angle. 
All right, so more of the rotations in the middle there. If I use this one, I might come up with a different one also, right? That if they're not, these aren't parallel. So it's got a twist to it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it again and just look at the lights only, the lamps. So look at these guys only as they rotate. And now you can see the girder rotate in and out. No buckling. The professor of engineering like went out to see what had happened. No buckling. He's coming back. Deck. Walking with some difficulty along the nodal line, which is the center stripe of the roadway. Look at the light. Look at the light. So you see what the girder is doing there, how it's flexing. All right, the cables, one cable after another is being snatched. We don't see a 40 mile an hour wind blowing him off, right? Negative pressure dropping him down to the ground. These cables are become post tension, these dual cable systems they have there. And they're acting as that getting under under right now the one to the what to the right has got more tension on it but it's got a lot of tension on it it wants to spring back this structure back up and the ones to the left are loose now so these are these are loose it's just this high cycle and uh, and not until they do a reversal some so somewhere they're about equal but it's too late the momentum of, of the structure is still spinning around gonna then start putting tension on these Slack these, this side, slack this side, and then the weight of the structure, um, the pendulum, is going to go up, and then it can't go up anymore, and it's going to try to drop down to level off. Too late. It's too much. It's going to keep on going because these cables are like rubber bands. They're elastic. For whatever reason, they become real elastic. And here we go. Look at the cables. The one, just look at the cables. Think of the cables again. Now, maybe I can do this when I pause it. So right about right about here, pausing it. If these are the uh, let's see, that's the uh, distressed cables. This would obviously be a loose loose cable because it's up in the air. So this would be loose. This is the downside over there. So there will be tension there, and so it's got this wave profile of what of how it's perfect where these cables for example these are loose these are loose but then down here these can't this is down low this is lower so this is tensioned all right so that's tension i'm gonna use red red for tension i should use another color like blue for not tension maybe so these are not tensioned not tensioned and on the other, so it's ready to drop now. And as it drops, they do a reversal. They're going to get, they're going to become in tension. This becomes loose. And then you get this wave like this as it performs, as it performs. Look, so you can find it anywhere you want. You can tell me right now, where's the tension part? Okay, so on the opposite side of structure is the tension side. So over here, this is. Now flex down, so these cables over here are under tension, right? And this is rotated up right here. So this side is now loose. But it's weighs, it's got a significant weight to it, remember? So it can't just stay up there. It's going to come down and do the reversal. And there's the swing action again. There's the profile. And you could profile this whole structure through its whole failure with slowing it down and watching it through tension, you know, on each side, having its own um, behavior for down here would be um, non-tension. And on the other side, it looks like this is down a little bit. So let me just tap it. That would be tension. Uh, that was down over here, tension over to my dots. And then here I would change it to this is not tension. Oh, no, that's the tension side. This is, this. let me clean that up. Because that high side is lower than the side to the right of us. So this would be the this is the high side of the structure to the right. So that's all not tensioned. And then over here, this is dropped. So this is all the tension there. So you can imagine the profile of cables and you wave it. And as it does a reversal. Oh, it's still going up. Okay, it still went up a bit. And then here comes the reversal. The weight of it down. It can't do anything else. Remember, it is 
The cables can only go so much, and then it snatches it. It stops it from going any further. The cables, you, know, you can't rotate anymore. It's interesting, these connections, how they performed it. They're, they're, they're great, but it looks like, like this is a connection joint. It's, uh, that it might be a joint, because it, lo it looks open in a few of the M videos. But that's what's going on here. We it's remarkable that the girders were this flexible. This is photographed at normal speed. Okay, again, I want you to look at the lights. So if you look at the lights right now, we can see that the lights are to the left are starting to come out of plumb. So this is be this will be going um, this way, right? Not in tension. And to the right, this is out of plumb this direction. So that's the girder rotating and is taking on tension. Remember, it's rotating. So that cable, it's like that now. Yeah, it's being stretched. See that angle there? It's being stretched, putting post tensioning in that cable. Watch it. And it's going to want to spring it back out. It's going to want to straighten back out. There we go. Watch the light. However, a it. collapse was inevitable after a little more than an hour of this. An hour is huge, right? All right, there we go again. There's, there's the up and down. Let's do pause there. So again, this would be your, let's do the blue again. So these are slack, all right? Slack, slack, slack. And opposite of that slack, that same profile, you would then tell me which ones are greater, which one's taking on the greatest tension would be the opposite of that, would be, you know, these guys. This would be the greatest tension there because it's got the most amount of deflection on the other side. Watch the lights. Or watch it, rather. And they're parallel. And think of that. So let's watch it. There it is. There's a better shot of it. All right. So this then fails. Now, they did a, um, let's grab another couple of videos. I don't need to show the failure, do I? Let's see. You understand now that, that, that what's going on here, the swinging and close to tension. Post tension, I mean the tension, uh, post tensioning is taking place and then relaxing. And it's a swing. And there's the lights now, parallel. Look at the lights, how they rock. Equal. The car had been abandoned earlier. No one was injured in the whole affair. However, a small dog in the car was frightened and was afraid to come out. And he perished along with the bridge. Look at the lights. Now, with the bridge deck moved to the side, it says collapse or something. Okay. All right. So it looks like the middle went down first. Broke first, the most tension in there, the mid-span. So there's another one that's not, you know, not copyright protected. It's gone all the way out. So Tacoma Bridge, Washington, opened only a few months ago, was built at a cost of over $6 million. But misfortune overtakes the great structure. These are some of the most amazing... Now, they had stiffeners in that eight-foot beam, that eight-foot girder, rather. They put them in there, but it wasn't enough. Pictures ever recorded by a newsreel. The actual collapse of the world. And you see them here. See them? And this span here. Now remember, this would be the uh, blue side, if you will. This is going down. That's the tension side. So that post-tension cables are acting like rubber bands. World's third largest suspension bridge. They're not, just, they're not just not pulling for free. And as you can see, they transfer. There's the uh, doubled up. And the spacing looks pretty much better here. Um, there's the connections, as they show them. No, nothing looks like it's popped yet, or broken yet from there. Um, and then you see the light, the lights. Oh, this from the other side. That's the car angle from the other side. Okay. Sets up a so he says only a 35 mile an hour wind. The other one says 40. All right. Big swinging of the bridge, which increases with each swing. And they, and uh, you have a wind going supposedly one direction. How is it that the wind and it's going and the bridge is rotating in two directions? Wind control that get a resonance of that. No, a steady wind.
It had to be a pulsing wind to do that. And I don't believe this is a pulsing wind. I believe they're saying it's 35 mile hour steady. I believe, again, it's the cables going, you know, you can't, you, you can't, no one's talked about the post tensioning that was, it's being done every time the load of the structure gets transferred like that. There's the lights off, off of the one, off the one cable there. It takes it onto this side of the structure here into these cables. These cables act like a damn rubber band, whip, and whips it back up into place. And like a pendulum, next one does its turn. So right here, it's being pulled, stressed down. So I ask you, is it the cables, each one of these individual cables, or is it the mainstay cable that that is um, the issue? Well, you would simply look at the main stake cable and see if they're dip if it's dipping. It could be a combination of both. We saw where it went through the structure there, and they show it vibrating, swinging back, and you know, bouncing in this area. But we want to know if this is dipping. If this isn't dipping, we just put it all in the, in here, just in these drop cables, right, and all the hangers. But if this cable is dropping, now we know it could be a combination of both the drop hangers plus this guy swinging them back up. Whip whip up and down so watch your cable see if you can tell me if this cable moves okay. I'd almost finally the, the swing road and the suspension cables give way and plunge into the water below the cable was whipping. I'm going to stop the video. You guys can find the content yourself. There you go. There's a 31 minute long video, so I want to stop it now. All right. Love you. Hope you enjoy. Oh, wait a minute. I want to show you the dog. Fortunately, the only casualties were a car stalled on the bridge and a dog. I want to see the dog running down the bridge. Okay, trying to tell you that they did try to tell you it, it wouldn't get out of the car. See, so someone colorized this image, this video. But I want you to look at that cable, and you can see it is swinging like this, you know, like a pendulum. But the cables, uh, uh, the mainstay cable, appears to not being stretched. It's more likely the drop cables that are uh, that are doing the elastic action. Watch the cable not jump up and down. It swings to the left a little bit, but the others are jumping up and down. The drop cables. Okay. Um, he says, Professor, this guy risked his life for a dog in a car. Um, yeah, show him coming back. Pausing the video. Okay, I want you to look again at the, at the how I describe it with the lights, the parallelness of the of, the, of each side of the structure, the box design, if you will, and then notice the, the top cable and then the other cables, how they would be taking on the loads. So the lights are parallel. The lights left and right parallel, and the cables are the other one becoming post tensioning and snatching it back. Um, there's the professor coming towards us, and you can profile the lamps, telling you how it's uh, the bridge's uh, uh, twisted twerk profile. Again, the main cable swings left and right a little bit in our purview, but the other cables are the one. Let me let me catch it. Um, now, so you can see that these are all in tension now, and they're like that. Um, let's see, so this road deck is like that. So they're, they're like that. These took on significant amount of tension. They were originally plumb, right? They're plumb like this, the cables. Now they're in this, pro this position. So this is plumb with the lights and now here are the lights here are the cables here are the here is it out here now that light and the cables are like that so it's taking on a lot right at this point over here it's rotated even more as you can see with the lights way out of plumb of the cables so these cables are slack you see it's see how the lights up here and here are the cables behind it over here the cables are rotated way out 
So these are cables that are in super ten post tensioned. I'm saying post tension because it's after the fact and it's, it's being tensioned. And then they're going to relax in and out, in and out, swing the fat. Post tension, detention. Post tension, detention. Post tension, detention. And that's what I want you to see. And you look at the main cables, they look pretty, uh, the suspension cables look pretty damn great. All right. So here is uh, from someone else's video where they narrate and they state that uh, this is how it was before. This is just showing it. It's bounce. Engineers were puzzled by these strange oscillations, but they did not doubt the bridge's safety. In fact, you see that? So the bridge had this oscillating effect of up and down all the time. No, no, uh, no issues. It was transferring again. Some is going to post tension and non post tension. That's why I talked to you about the cables, right? They're, they're flex. Now you look at it this way the bridge deck, and as it traded off as cars going through it, some in tension, not in tension, tension, not in tension. And it just happened to get a crosswind and match up a perfect with it, which already had this problem with this going up and down. And you're know, trying to. Equalize. So again, this one's like each one I'm acting like a damn spring based on this ratio. This 40 foot, 39 foot wide structure created these things too close to each other. It created this perfect failure. Um, also, though, in fairness, the, the, the original engineer wanted larger outer beams, girders, and he was overridden for cost reasons and it went down from, like I said, 24, 25 feet down to 8 feet. So he, he, he had the idea of, of more weight there, um, you know, thicker mass and more stability. And look at that boy roll. So she's rolling like that, right? So it's the same thing as left to right, except for now. Look at the cable, the top, the top cable doing. Um, let's see if we can get the, uh, the model. I think she does have found the model. There's some tie downs that were done at one point. To try to keep the structure uh, stable. The, a lot of times people don't catch that. I remember reading when I was a long time ago about the tie downs. And the video is not her. She's just narrating over it. Um, it was the engineer that did, did the model. They were trying to figure this out. I'm trying to go back to your tie downs again. Um, tie downs, tie downs, tie downs. Come on, new distributing. Okay. Uh, yeah, one of the uh, articles. Come on. I'm going to get it to you in just a moment. I want to show you the tie downs and end the video. They attempted to keep it from swaying by anchoring it. Um, one of the engineers overriding. Uh, it looks like I. Is it after this one? Okay, they, uh, well, we knew the night, the day of the bridge opened that something was wrong. Yep, the day, as soon as they opened, they knew it was wrong, right? All right. So, these are the tie-downs that they used. It didn't work on this span. This span wasn't an issue, right? Of course. So, apparently, it worked on this span. It's the back, one of the back spans. The mid span is the one that, uh, that didn't have the tie-downs yet. Which would keep it from rotating over, right? And it, and this was not under any great winds or anything else. This thing always had this flex in it. And could they have uh, made these larger? Yep. I think that was the plan at one point. End the video. Love you. Bye.